What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Honda CRV, courtesy of Apple Honda of Hanover in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because this is Honda's best selling SUV, a very good looking SUV in my personal opinion as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering, feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 crv first one being the lx starting at twenty nine thousand five hundred dollars ex for thirty two thousand ten dollars sport hybrid for thirty three thousand three hundred fifty dollars exl for thirty four six sixty sport l hybrid for thirty six thousand three fifty and lastly the sport touring hybrid going for thirty nine thousand five hundred dollars and so for all of those trim levels but the last one front wheel drive does come standard if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add fifteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices so as you can imagine with all of these trim levels there are a couple different power plants for the crv first one belonging to the lx ex and exl trim levels that one is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 190 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 179 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT. As far as MPG numbers go with that one, 28 in the city, 34 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 27 in the city, 32 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other engine configuration belonging to the hybrid trim levels, of course. That one is powered by a two liter inline four cylinder with two electric motors, putting out 204 horsepower, 247 pound feet of torque, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT. Zero to 60 time for that one, approximately 7.6 seconds. With that BG numbers coming in at 43 in the city, 36 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 40 in the city, 34 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel yet again. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration tests here in the CRV, I do want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a little toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter. If you were to press that, you will have options between econ, normal and snow and then sport if you were to go with the hybrid trim levels only. So ultimately they will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response and the steering sensitivity. And so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put this acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 honda crv here up to speed all right found her straight away in three two is this one three two one go love that instant acceleration that's quick man didn't expect that this thing is freaking quick yeah that's plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto the highway you know what the best part was though? It was kind of an instant acceleration, even more so than just a traditionally naturally aspirated engine. And of course, a heck of a lot better than any turbocharged engine because of the hybrid configuration. You have two electric motors, which instantly puts the power to the ground. It instantly gives you that instant torque. So yeah, that acceleration is definitely plenty fine. So absolutely no issues with that. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as that six easier stopping distance goes, that comes in at 123 feet, which is pretty much par for the course. As far as braking feel goes, it's on the softer side of things, no doubt. <laughs> Just tested it out. So it, I wouldn't have minded if Honda firmed up that braking feel a little bit. Having said that, this is an SUV, so it's not meant to be like a sports car braking feel. So it will get the job done. So I shouldn't be as critical with that. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson front suspension. In the back, multi-leg double wishbone type rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, that has been 100% perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So I absolutely love it. It's definitely absorbing the road imperfections a heck of a lot better than the Civic I just drove. I will say that. As far as steering feel goes, I got in an Econ driving mode right now. Let me go ahead and switch it back to Sport. It is a noticeably weightier difference there. So a much heavier feel to the steering instantly points you in the direction that you want to go, at least in that sport driving mode. Then when you take it out of that, it does instantly loosen up. So much more loosey goosey steering feel that you traditionally do find in SUVs, just about all of them out there. But I do like that it has that heavier feel in the sport driving mode. So kind of best of both worlds there. As far as cabin noise goes, it's been great, honestly. So 
is we're going 48 miles per hour right now. So I'll let you guys be the judge to my road mic right here. There isn't a heck of a lot of wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin. There is some rain noise because it's raining pretty hard today. But other than that, cabin noise has been 100% on point. So I love that. Touching on visibility, there are some uh, really beefy rear headrests there. But other than that, rear visibility is fine. And traditionally, it always has been in the CRV because of its shape. But those second row headrests are gigantic, so I probably should push them down a little bit. So that's gonna hinder it a little bit, but rain sensing windshield wipers are gonna come standard on the Sport Touring Hybrid as well. So that's gonna assist with forward visibility. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall like today, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you, kind of like automatic headlights. So just one less thing you gotta worry about, of course. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Honda CRV. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Honda CRV finished in platinum white pearl in the rain. In case you're curious about our exterior color name but anyways let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the van first character is the number seven indicating that the honda crv is built and assembled here in the u.s although the engine and transmission still come from japan but everything's assembled in the u.s but anyways let's go ahead and start up front on the crv here unique front fascia for the sport hybrid and yes that is the one that we have today in case you were curious. I know I didn't say that yet, so sorry about that. But LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. You get LED daytime running lights, get the automatic feature with that along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So very convenient feature there. You do have active grill shutters actually as well, meaning the grill shutters are gonna open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time so we do like that then to the bottom corners you do have front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination giving you better aerodynamics then as well but overall very aggressive very menacing looking front end in my personal opinion i like it but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one gloss black roof rails come standard on the sport trim levels that is what you guys are looking at up top there but chrome window surrounds are going to come standard for all trim levels across the board you will get rear privacy glass on the ex trim level and up Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors, unless you go with the sport trims and then they are finished in gloss black. The side mirrors, by the way, will be heated for all trim levels with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch steel wheels with covers for the LX, 18 inch silver painted alloys for the EX and EXL, 18 inch gloss black alloys for the sport hybrid trim levels. And lastly, 19 inch gloss black alloys for the sport touring hybrid trim level. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, the rain is picking up, but all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. As far as the all wheel drive badging goes, it's not actually on the tailgate. It's actually located just underneath of that rear window wiper in case you were curious. We'll find LED taillights. They do come standard across the board. They kind of look like the Volvo taillights on maybe the XC60 or something. So I like the design to it. You do have some like the video and subscribe badging found at the bottom corner of that tailgate there. And honestly, that is not what it says. I think you guys could see that, but I have been doing this for nine years. So if you're into new car reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button that is what i do every single week for the past nine years crazy i'm getting old but anyways just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips that actually looks really good and that's for the sport trim level by the way the chrome tips but anyways i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip Right, so now since you are around to the back of the CRV, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is a button to unlock it on the key fob. There is also, of course, a button on the tailgate itself. But I did want to mention though, it is a power tailgate for the EXL trim level and up. Then if you were to go with the Sport Touring Hybrid, it is a hands-free power tailgate. Otherwise, it's going to be a manual tailgate like we have today. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 39.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 70. 76.5 cubic feet that's a lot of space especially for the segment so i like that 
LED cargo lighting though found on all trim levels across the board. You typically don't find the LEDs in the cargo area. A lot of times it's going to be halogen bulbs. So I like seeing that. Tie down anchors do come standard. There's a couple grocery bag hooks in that cargo area as well. I love that. 12 volt power outlet back there. And there is a spare tire underneath of that cargo floor then as well. But then make our way up to the rear legroom. This is extremely impressive. 41 inches even. That's luxury like right there. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. It's a ton of space for me rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard there are rear usb charging ports for the sport hybrid trim level like we have today so love that rear ventilation does come standard the only thing i think i would add was probably uh at least have an optional rear window sunshade so you use that more often than you think but anyways then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the lx trim level 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar for the ex trim level and up heated front seats for the ex trim level and up leather seating for the EXL trim level and up and then a power adjustable passenger seat for the EXL trim level and up as well but honestly overall seating was plenty comfortable for me I will say it probably could have been a little bit more comfortable if the seams are vertical but because we have power adjustable front seats and because we have that power lumbar I definitely did not have any issues finding my perfect driving position but did take a good look at the steering wheel one of the best parts of the CRV honestly it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sport hybrid trim level and up and it's a very smooth leather as well so I like the feeling to it 10-2 grips are bolstered on the thicker side of things it gives me a better feeling of being in control so I like that as well and it will also be heated for the sport touring trim level in case you were curious but then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Honda logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate, and then the hold button, the circle in it, that's going to be a remote start that comes standard on all trim levels across the board. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there. And so once started up, all trim levels will get a 7-inch digital gauge cluster, kind of found on the left there. So it's not full digital gauges, but it looks pretty darn good. You got your speedometer on your right, and all of your fuel information essentially is on your left, including uh, average fuel economy, which apparently is 32 miles per gallon in my short little test drive here today, which isn't that bad. Also, it's going to give you how many miles you have left until you hit empty, uh, outside temperature, trip A, trip B, the list goes on. Pretty much everything you could possibly want on uh, the digital portion of the gauges at least. Then make our way to overall interior quality. I love our power moonroof that comes standard on the EX trim level and up. LED interior lighting does come standard for every single trim level across the board, so I like that. Dual zone climate control for the EX trim level and up. Automatic climate control though for the LX trim level, so even if you go with that LX, you can still set a temperature and it's gonna automatically hit it for you, so I like that. Auto dimming rear view mirror for the EXL trim level and up. Wireless phone charger for the EXL trim level and up. Otherwise, you're going to get some nice rubberized storage here just in front of the shifter, which I'm sure is where you're probably going to put your cell phone. Just above that, you got a couple USB charging ports. There's a 12 volt power outlet just behind the shifter. You have a couple cup holders and within the center armrest, there's actually a ton of space within that center armrest. So pretty good amount of space in there compared to what I usually see in SUVs. But I like the honeycomb mesh design found just above the passenger side glove box and the climate control settings. I also love this texturized gloss black finish found on the doors. I thought that was a nice touch as well. So I almost forgot to mention there's an overhead sunglass holder that comes standard for all trim levels up top here as well. So overall, I think Honda did a pretty darn good job. Nothing crazy. Wouldn't have minded if they finished uh, surrounding the shifter here in a nice texturized silver design like they do with the Civic, but it's a matte black, unfortunately. You guys always know I gripe on that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here because it is going to differ. So if you go with the LX, EX, or Sport Hybrid like you're seeing now, you're going to get a 7-inch color touchscreen display, but then if you were to go with the EXL trim level and up, you're going to get a 9-inch color touchscreen display. But either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but it is going to be wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay with the 9-inch screen at least. So we don't have that today, but you can also check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are four different sound systems. That's crazy. But anyways, four speakers and 160 watts for the LX, six speakers and 240 watts for the EX and Sport Hybrid trims, eight speakers and 320 watts for the EXL and Sport L Hybrid, and then a 12 speaker Bose sound system for the Sport Touring. So we do have that six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. 
it's okay. It's more like a, a podcast kind of radio station, honestly. I don't know. There wasn't a ton of clarity. The bass was just so-so. I will say the Bose sound system I just tested in the Civic Sedan, that was incredible, actually. So if you like music, definitely go with the Bose, but it, it'll get the job done. It's just nothing crazy. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the CRV in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with a few different views. It's also going to make a kind of chiming noise when you put it in reverse since this is a hybrid after all. So it's going to let other people know that you're actually driving, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start with the best part. IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which pretty much says it all right there. That's the very highest rating you can get from IIHS. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Honda Sensing, that comes for all trim levels. That gives you a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, and a driver attention monitoring system as well. Then if you were to go with the EXL trim level and up, you're gonna get front and rear parking sensors. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the CRV, great safety on this one. You cannot beat an IIHS top safety pick plus. So if you got kids, you got peace of mind with that. Excellent steering feel as well. That's something I always tend to mention with Mazda and Honda. They have incredible steering feels for what their vehicles are. So it actually makes you kind of enjoy driving this thing. And it's a regular family SUV. You traditionally don't find enjoyable drives with those, but it's actually pretty darn good because of the steering feel on this thing. Bose sound system being available, like I said, I like that because that's an incredible sound system. I also like the hybrid configuration in the CRV. I think this is the first time I ever tested the hybrid. You can get some pretty darn decent miles per gallon in the size of this SUV. So I only took it like maybe five to seven miles, so I probably didn't get the full stretch of what it could really do, but it's pretty darn good. I really liked when it was operating on just the electric motors at lower speeds. That was pretty cool. You also have a ton of space with the CRV, especially when you compare it to the competition. The only thing, uh, constructive criticism, or it's not really constructive criticism, it's just something in the back of my mind, I guess, is with the turbocharged engine, I would probably question the reliability a little bit just because historically turbocharged engines aren't as reliable as their naturally aspirated counterparts, which is another reason why I kind of prefer this hybrid configuration in the CRV. Not only will you get better MPGs, but you have the reliability of a naturally aspirated four cylinder along with the two electric motors. And I could be wrong, check consumer reports, but I feel like that would be the more reliable pick at least in the end. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the CRV in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.